Aleluya. Aleluya, aleluya, aleluya. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Aleluya. Okay, it's lovely to be back. And this uh, evening or this night or this morning, wherever we are in different parts of the world, the Lord is going to do lovely things for us. Because he's asked me to talk to you in the month of January, in the new year of 2022, about the light of life. And of course, many of us are believing and we already know that Jesus is the true light. He is the real light. But I want to run you through scripture to explain that for you. And uh, this is how God would like us to do it. So I remind you of the word of scripture as given in Job chapter 37, verse 5. At God's command, amazing things happen. Wonderful things that we cannot understand. So brother and sister, God wants to remind you that wonderful things are going to happen now that you and I cannot understand, cannot uh, we don't even know how it is going to be, but God is going to do it for us. Okay? And he is a God who keeps his promises. So are you ready to believe with me that wonderful things are going to happen right now? Amen. And yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. So Job 37 verses 2 to 4 says like this. Listen all of you to the voice of God to the thunder that comes from his mouth. So trust me, he's going to come down with his thunderous voice. It is not I who is going to say things now. I believe that it is his spirit which has led us to listen to this word that has been put together for this meeting. And God is going to speak to you. Some of you, like thunder, is going to be loud enough to be heard by you. He's going to strike like lightning and dispel darkness if there is any in our situations in our lives. Okay, so God wants to remind you, as per Job 37 verses 2 to 4, listen all of you to the voice of God, to the thunder that comes from his mouth. He sends the lightning across the sky from one end, where I just said, from one end of the earth to the other. Then the roar of his voice is heard the majestic sound of thunder and all the lightning flashes. So again, I'm reminding you not just that it is my thought that lightning is going to strike, but lightning is going to flash across today in our environments, in our households, because God wants to light up our situations. Okay. So I want to remind you of this wonderful word today. And in 1 Samuel 12, 16, you know, in the Old Testament, again, the word is given like this. So then stand where you are and you will see the great thing which the Lord is going to do. It's not Brother Perry. It's not you and me. But God himself wants to do what? A great thing. So if you believe that God can do a great thing even today, even in this Saturday hour, he can do it because he is the source of all goodness and mercy. He's the source of all might and power. He wants to reveal himself to you and to me as a real light, the light of life. So are we ready to listen to him? Are we ready to allow that light to dispel our darkness? It's for us, yes. to, it's for us to respond to his call, to his, yes. Um, yes. To his ready, lighting Lord. up of our lives. Okay. And yes, uh, 1 Samuel 26, 24, he tells us, this is the story, the background of how uh, David was being hounded by King Saul. And David, the shepherd boy, was anointed one of the Lord. He was almost going to be killed. And that, that's the background of the story here. But David uh, had a chance to actually pierce the lance on Saul and kill him. But he said, no, I will not do that. Because Saul was anointed as well. So he says he was merciful to him. And he said, just as I spared your life today, may the Lord do the same to me and free me from all troubles. That is the word of scripture as spoken by King David before he became king, when he was being hounded by Saul, waiting to be killed at the hands of Saul. In fact, the, the story is reversed a few verses after that in 1 Samuel 
in the next chapter, in chapter 27, verse 1, David says to himself, he forgot that episode, how he spared the life of Saul. Saul was still trying to hound him and catch him. At that time, a moment of fear takes over David when he says, one of these days, Saul will kill me. The best thing for me to do is to escape to Philistia. Then Saul will give up looking for me in Israel and I will be safe. But the Lord reminds him and the positions are reversed. When Saul realizes that David could have killed him the other day and let, yet let him escape, Saul again rectifies his mistake and says, no, just as you allowed me to go free, today I will also not hound you anymore. And he allows him to go away without being killed by himself. Okay, so God can change situations upside down. It is for him to do what he wants to do, provided we commit our situation to the Lord. It is a moment not to panic when the world around us is going haywire. Things are not the same that it was in Australia right now. At the end of 2021, it is not what it was in the beginning of 21. And in the beginning of 2022, you know things are very different or it's going to get different and better or worse. Only God knows. But God is encouraging you and me, brother and sister. It's like how the, the psalmist calls out in Psalm 126, verse 1, 2, and 3. You know, it's the story of the city of Zion. When the Lord brought us, sorry, when the Lord brought us back to Jerusalem, it was like a dream. The Lord wants to encourage us. Think about it. I want to make you go like as if you're in a dream, scot free, released, anointed, blessed debt free, you know, with a lot of healings in your body, in your mind, in your soul, in your spirit. Are you burdened with sickness? Are you burdened with anxious, uh, anxious moments, anxiety, anguish, fear, loss, whatever it is. The Lord wants to bring us out, bring us back to where we belong, to Jerusalem. It was like a dream. How we laughed, how we sang for joy. This is what the psalmist says in that Psalm 126. It's very interesting to read that how the Jews will also rejoice when they come back to where they belong. Then the other nation said about us, the Lord did great things for them. So today, trust me, God wants to do great things for us. Just in the opening word that I gave you in the book of Job, he wants to do marvelous things. Do you believe is the question. Do I believe yes. is the question. If yes. we believe, yes. I believe today is going to be marvelous. Just like the Lord gave like a, like a bolt of lightning. The other day when I was just doing some cooking, that thought came to me. This meeting on 22nd January, the womb that has been shut will be open. People who want to bear children can ask and anybody else is interceding on their behalf, believe, and God can do it for them. Okay, so God indeed, uh, the third verse, indeed he did great things for us, how happy we were. So you and me should be saying the same thing in a couple of hours, in a couple of minutes how good it is, how happy we are that God has done great things for us. So in order to set the tone, these words were given to you. And now I'm quickly going to run you through three parables today, all known to all of us. You know, it is not something new. We have heard this over, over and over again, but God wants to reinforce that thought in your heart and in my heart. Matthew chapter nine, verse 20 to 22. This is the story of the woman with the issue of blood. And how many years was she suffering with that ailment? 12 long years. So the word goes like this. A woman who had suffering from severe bleeding for 12 years came up behind Jesus and touched the edge of his cloak. I've taken all the scriptures today from the Good News Bible so that in case some of you want to look at it in your own Bibles, you are welcome to do so, okay? According to the Good News version of the Bible, it's very simple. It's very clearly given. The woman came from behind and touched the edge of the cloak of the Lord Jesus as he was passing by. She has been suffering for 12 years and it has been a question of severe bleeding. Women who have this issue know how difficult it is, how irritating it can be, how frustrating it can be. For a couple of weeks itself is unbearable. Imagine for 12 long years, must have been very, very difficult, must have been a gone case, right? But the Lord is now bringing us to that moment when Jesus turned around, when she said to herself, right? She said to herself, if only I touch the cloak, touch his cloak, I will get well. So what are we waiting for? You and me also have to do the same. Doesn't matter. 
did we have the same trouble, the same unemployment problem, couple of years, couple of months? Are we still being harassed at the workplace? Are we still having loans to pay off? Are we still having a sickness which has been troubling us for some time? However, be the period of time. The Lord wants to remind us, just like that woman with some simple faith went literally crawling on the ground when the Lord was passing by. And all she said to herself was, if I only touch his cloak, I will get well. So it is an invitation to you, brother and sister, to touch the cloak of his garment and you and me will get well. Verse 22 very clearly, beautifully tells us this. Jesus turned around. The moment she stretched out her hands towards the cloak, God knew it. He's, he's, he's the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. He's a God of all hearings. He's a God of all seeings. He's a God of all sayings. Everything is known to him. Before you speak, I will hear. I mean, I will answer. And while you yet speak, I will hear. Isaiah 65, 24 is already foretold to us so many years, even before Jesus walked on planet Earth. So Jesus knew when she was calling out. The heart, she never said anything. She never made a noise. She was there, one among the many people in that crowd. But when she reached out to him, the Lord turned and saw her and said, Courage, my daughter. Your faith has made you well. At that very moment, this is how the good news Bible says, at that very moment, instantaneously, immediately, that's the meaning, right? Instantaneously, immediately, at that very moment, the woman became well. He didn't stand there and give her a lecture. Okay, you spent all your money running after doctors. You should have come to me earlier. Why didn't you think of me earlier? He never asked any questions. That is the beauty of the Lord Jesus. You human beings look at all externals, but the Lord only sees the heart. And so that is a learning for us, even as prayer team members. When we pray for people, we don't, we don't have to worry about how many months and how many years they had this problem, how long it has been troubling them. Just believe that Jesus can do it just like that. At the twinkling of an eye, at the snap of the fingers, it's all the moment that he needs to just get it done. So at that very moment, he made the woman well. When? After 12 years of suffering and waiting. Now we look at another story. Yes, now uh, this, uh, I just let, before I go to the next story, in Luke, again, the same story is revealed, not only in the book of Matthew, but also in the book of Luke, chapter 8, 43, verse. Among them was a woman who had suffered from severe bleeding for 12 years. She had spent all that she had on doctors, but no one was able to cure her. Very clearly, emphatically stated. Nowhere she could get the answer. Till the moment she came to Jesus, then she got the answer. Are we in that situation, brother and sister? We have gone here, we have gone there, we have done this, we have done that. Whatever in our human strength that we could do, we could have done it. We may not have got the answer. Doesn't matter. Today, if you believe that Jesus is going to do mighty things, magnificent things, as revealed in the book of Job, he is going to do it. All it needs is stretch out your hand and touch his cloak. Okay, so get ready. Get ready to touch his cloak right now. Before I finish the next two parables, you are going to touch the cloak and you're going to get the answers to your need. The Lord said, I don't have to intercede at the end of the talk to get your answers while this word is being preached. You know, like that's how it happens in big gospel meetings. We are nothing. We are just humbling ourselves before the Lord. Unto dust, all of us shall return. None of us are alive, are righteous before the presence of God. But in his righteousness, we are made whole. And when we trust that he is the Alpha and Omega and the beginning and the end, and we put our trust in him, then as this word is spoken to you, is being given utterance to you, his word will make it happen, okay? So now as you listen to this word, this bleeding problem is coming to an end. The money that was spent like rivers, spent on doctors and medication and treatments, chemotherapy and whatever, if there's anybody with cancer, cancer is growth, cancer is outbreaks, believe that God can touch just at the twinkling of an eye. He can take cancers out. Cancer is just a name. Whatever be the sickness that we are talking about. Is it the aftermath of COVID? Is it the downslide of 
uh, of your blood sugar levels or blood pressure levels, if they're shooting up or coming down, doesn't, doesn't make a difference to the Lord. All he has to do is just say a word and you and me are going to be healed today. No one was able to cure her, but who cured her? The Lord Jesus just turned around and just looked at her and she was made whole that very moment, right? So now I'm reminding you of the next beautiful parable as seen in Luke again, chapter 13, verse 11. A woman there had an evil spirit that had kept her sick for 18 long years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. So there again, 18 years to be bent down. A very sad, very difficult situation. Very frustrating situation. But again, there again, Jesus does the wonderful healing and miracle. The Lord says, the next two verses I'm reading for you. Then Jesus, when Jesus saw her, he called out to her. He's a compassionate, loving God. There are times when some of us don't think of Jesus as the moment. We are so caught up in our worries. We are so caught up in our problems. We don't have time ask, to ask Jesus to come in. But then he's a loving savior. He calls out to this woman. She didn't call out to him. Like in the earlier case, she didn't stretch out her hand. But Jesus saw her. Take note, he took notice of her and he's calling out to her. Jesus saw her and he called out to her. Woman, you are free from your sickness. Again, there again, Jesus never asked any post-mortem details. When it happened, how it happened, who caused it? No. He just says a statement. Woman, you are healed today. You are free from your sickness. So take courage, brother and sister. Whatever be your physical ailment, be encouraged in the Lord. We have seen many healings in this very group, in this very um, 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 Saturday meetings led by Brother Perry and the team. Many, many, many here miracle, miraculous healings. You have been testifying. Now it's your moment to get your healing. It is your moment to get the healing for your brother, your sister, your family member. Doesn't matter if that lady is not here. Doesn't matter if that son of the house is not in this meet. You believe Jesus can touch you wherever he or she is. Remember the story of the Roman centurion? Just say one word, Lord, and my servant shall be healed. Wherever he or she is. What a faith that man had. Can we not lend? So in this case, what did he do? He placed his hands on this woman, which is who was bent over 18 years. And at once, again, remember this, at once, not after two hours, not after 40 days, at once, she straightened up and began to do what? Praise God. So when you receive the healing, the only thing you need to do is to praise God. And if you start believing you're getting the healing, start right away praising God. As you praise the affliction, as praise. you start believing, the, the, the red seas will praise. open and you will praise. get the answer. That is what God praise. was telling me to tell you today. Praise. So similarly, praise. the praise. official of the synagogue praise. was angry. Now remember, this is how the world around us will think. When we are trying to get our healing, they will tell us excuses. No, 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 not today. Today is a Sabbath. You cannot get healed. You cannot go and ask for your healing. That is human Praise. understanding. But that's not the understanding Praise. of the Lord Jesus. Look at verse Praise. 14. I want to remind you that verse Praise. 14. The official of the synagogue was angry that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. So he spoke up and said to the people, there are six days in which we should work. So come during those days and be healed, but not on the Sabbath. You see, that is the limitation of a human mind. Maybe a mind that doesn't know the love of Jesus. A human, a human mind that didn't know the value of having Jesus in their lives. But you and me know the value of the love of Jesus. You and me know the beauty of the love of Jesus in our lives. He wants to heal us then and there, instantaneously. So don't wait for the day when it is a working day, when it is not a Sabbath day. Every day is a day when Jesus can heal us, okay? So now in John 5.5, 5, I remind you of the next story where the man was just laid up, lying down there near the pool at Bethesda, right? A man was there who had been sick for 38 long years. I told you a story of 12 years. At once, Jesus healed her immediately. I just told you a story of 18 years. The woman with the, with the bent up back, for 18 years was instantaneously, what once Jesus healed her when she called out to him. In the second case, Jesus called to her and gave her the healing. If you find favor in the sight of God, 
you will find fame in the sight of man. Many times when we are not worthy to have graces granted to us in our workplaces, in the situations that uh, surround us, God's favor will lead us through answers. God's favor will bring answers to us because he's so gracious to us. Let us never forget that. Doesn't matter, our limitations might limit us, but we take courage. We believe in his healing, salvific power of the Lord Jesus. Okay, yes. so again, in John chapter 5, verses 6 to 8, I'm just following up with the same story of 38 years. Jesus saw this man lying there. And Jesus knew all about him. And he knew that the man had been there sick for such a long time. Imagine 38 years. Some of us don't cross 38 years of our life in this planet. I'm not talking about you and me who are alive today. Glory to Jesus. We have crossed 38, most of us maybe. But there may be others who have not seen the light of the day in a very uh, young age. So 38 years is the half a lifetime. It's almost like almost a lifetime for a few people. Yet, even at that last moment, God can come and turn the situation around. And what did he say? He came to that man and asked him, do you want to get well? That's a question I want to ask you today. Do you want to get well? Do you want yes, to get yes. your financial breakthroughs? Yes. Do you want to get yes, your life yes, yes. Do you want to yes. get answers to your children, yes, grandchildren? Yes, yes. Yes, the God yes. loves grandparents. You know, it is wonderful to be a grandparent because it's the, as given in the book of Psalms, it is the grace, the loving benevolence of the Lord that allows you to live to a ripe old age, whatever the age, okay? And you are now seeing the children's children. What a glorious uh, moment it is. It is the grace of God. So uh, the joy of being a grandparent is something special, unique. People who are there in that state of life will agree with me. So I want you to remember that you are there today, not just to pray for yourself or for your, your own children and their siblings, but for the next generation as well. You must release yes. the anointing into your generation, the next yes. generation and the forthcoming yes. generation. It is a blessing yes. unto the nations that is bestowed on you, grandparents. Never forget that. The children who grew up with grandparents are anchored. They know the value systems much more. I, I grew up with parents and grandparents. Maybe so I'm a little biased on this. I, but I've seen it. I am a professor. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yes. And I watched 34 generations of youngsters pass through the portals of my college and under my guidance. So I've seen it. The children who had parents surveilling them, children who grew up with grandparents, their value systems are very different. Their tolerance levels are beautiful. They are much more adjustable, much more giving, much more caring. Uh, whereas the children who have not gone through that phase of life, they are uh, very ambitious, possibly. They are given to their own whims and fancies. Maybe I don't blame that generation because they were not taught. They were not you know, molded in that sense of the term. So when you have an opportunity to mold your grandkids, to, grand, to mold your children, please take heed, parents. It's an important task Jesus has put in our hands. Because what you make of your child can have a repercussion on the rest of the society and the rest of the world, okay? It, so now, it, it, going back to our story, do you want to get well? Yes. yes so what does yes. Jesus tell the man? The sick man answered, Sir, I don't have anyone here to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I'm trying to get in, somebody else is always getting there first. Isn't this our story as well? Every time we are trying to get in, but somebody else yes. is getting in there before us. Yes, yes. Don't worry. What is Jesus saying? Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. And Just one yeah. word, get up. When the command of the Lord was given, that's it. It breaks the barriers. It breaks the strongholds. It doesn't exist anymore. Only his one word went through. His word went through, get up. And immediately the man was made well. Again here, 12 years, 18 years, 38 years, just one word from the Lord, just one command from the Lord, immediately and once, instantaneously, God can set us free. So be encouraged, brother and sister, however many years you have waited for the answer. I know I've also waited for answers many years, and it has been a very hard time. But when you trust that God is still alone, he's still seated on the throne of grace, He's still the emboldened, empowered King of Kings and Lord of Lords. 
your answer will reach you. John 5.14 reminds us at the end of that story. Afterward, the man was healed and ran along, lived his life. But Jesus reminds him, gives him a warning, gives him a caution. I too want to remind you of that caution. It is not just enough to hear the lovely word, get the answer and go about our business. No, God is reminding us today as one of the important provisions to retain the healings in our life. Afterwards, Jesus found that man who was healed in the temple and said to him, listen, you are well now. So stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. You know, imagine Jesus telling him that. Imagine Jesus telling you and me this. How many times I've healed you? How many times I've been there to answer your need? To give an answer to you and what are you doing about it what have you done thereafter is a question i'm not asking you to go around and tom tom to everybody no not like that but yet you can take your voice and you can glorify the lord whenever possible you can glorify the lord in giving him praise and thanksgiving for that moment of grace that god lent to you and to me this is grace that is sufficient for us to make us whole to restore us to health, to health, wealth, whatever that we need. But God is also cautioning us, go and sin no more. That means there has to be a change in the realm. There has to be a shift in the way in which we think. If today you believe Jesus has answered your prayer, stop cribbing. I'm asking for the same answers again and again. Jesus is telling you, I'm telling you the truth. Those who hear my words and believe in him who sent me have eternal life. So now that is the last word for you. He wants you to believe that he came to give you answers, not just for your earthly life, but for eternal life. They will not be judged, but have already been passed from death to life. The moment you start believing in eternity, the moment you start believing in the eternal love of God, eternal life that Jesus has paid the price by his death and by his blood as ransom on the cross of Calvary, you and my have the assurance of eternal life. Amen. Remember the story of the adulterous woman? Remember the yes. lady who was in adultery? What did the Lord say? There's a story as Go and sin story. no more. 3 and 11. Go yes. and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Yes. He bent down and he wrote on the ground, right? When everybody else was ready to throw the stones at him, he cautioned all the men out there. If there is any of you, who has not done this, no sin, if any of you have not sinned, then let him be the first one to take the stone. Right? So Jesus is telling us, don't be judgmental about others. At, at the same time, remember the times when he forgave us. And he's also reminding us, go and sin no more. Then the Lord will tell us, just as he told the woman who was about to be stoned to death, caught in adultery, I do not condemn you either. Go and sin not again, not again, never again. I know it's not easy to say never again, but it is possible. Even if you fall, doesn't matter. Get up again. Ask the Lord to take you forward. And he's there waiting with his arms open to lead you. So the message today, before you look at the new light, before you receive the real light, the true light of light, two conditions. First, believe that Jesus is the answer. Go to him in your state of need and stop sinning. Sin no more. And just don't do what is displeasing to Jesus. Okay? If you stop looking at what is displeasing to Jesus, start identifying what is not acceptable to Jesus. And if you pay attention how you can avoid it, the battle is won, my dear brother and sister. So I just want to remind you, uh, now coming back to John, the essence of the talk today, John chapter 7, verse 37 and 38. On that last and most important day of the festival, Jesus stood up and said in a loud voice, whoever is thirsty should come to me, right? We all have needs. We are in thirst. Now, Lord, the Lord Jesus is inviting us, come to me. And whoever believes in me should drink. That means you partake of what he has to offer you. As the scripture says, when you drink of the waters Jesus is offering to you, Streams of living water will be poured out from his side. Not ordinary water, not water to quench today's situation alone. Answers to all your life. Answers to eternity. Life-giving waters. 
streams of life-giving waters is awaiting you and me just now. And John 8, 12 clearly tells us, God made the proclamation. Jesus himself told us. He spoke to the Pharisees again. I am the light of the world, he said. Whoever follows me will have the light of life and will never walk in darkness. Just one ray of light is enough to dispel all darkness. However thick the darkness, however long the darkness, the range of the darkness, one ray of light, one laser beam can dispel darkness to a great extent, to a great length. So just believe, if our ordinary ray of human created light can do that, how much more can God's precious light enlighten us, enliven us, strengthen us, motivate us, change our darkness into light? That's my favorite verse. I've been saying that again and again for the past couple of months, and I see it happening. In Isaiah 42, 16, the Lord clearly says this. He came to make the darkness. He makes your darkness into light. He makes your crooked places straight. He's there with you and does this for you and never forsakes you. He will do that yet again today when you and I are looking to the source of light just now as we are going to go into intercession. The Lord reminds you and me that I am the light of the world Whoever follows me will have the light of life. life. Not 2022, January 22nd. 22nd, January 2022 is the day when we think of this light. But this light is given to you and me for all our life. For the days to follow, the days to follow, the months to follow, this year and the days to come. And you will never walk again in darkness. Do we believe that? Yes, we do. Light we shines do. In the darkness. Amen. Sister Olga, God bless you for that. The light shines in the darkness, Amen, and the darkness Lord. has never put it out. The Lord is again challenging you. The darkness can never put out the light. Do you realize that? The darkness yes, will come, yes, come yes, and go. The shadow yes, effect Lord. will come and go, but it cannot conquer yes. the light. The light has conquered the darkness. This yes. was the real light. John 1 9 clearly tells us. John 1 9 clearly tells us this is the true light. This was the real light, the light that comes into the world and shines on all people, irrespective yes, of Lord. age, caste, creed, irrespective of your nature, irrespective of your need, your situation. The light has come into the world and shines on all people, shines on you yes. and me in Dubai, Amen. in India, in Singapore, in Australia, yes. in Japan wherever Amen. we are connected from right now, okay? So Amen. I want to give glory to Jesus that he's a God who has spoken even now as we have listened to this word. And before I get started into any intercession that we may be doing, I want to remind you of the word that the Lord has given me personally. I want to uh, emphasize on that word and then get into the call for which we will be um, ministering to, with each other to intercede with others and for others. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. The Lord, uh, in the beginning of 2022, when I was asking for a word to be led into the call for which I'm trying to obey for God's glorious namesake, the Lord clearly gave me this word. I'm sharing this to encourage you. If God gave me this word and I stand by this word, it will be brought to pass even today on the 22nd of January, when we intercede for impossible things, important things, and life-changing things. The Lord says in verse 17, but the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. He spoke to me with that word, so that the message might be preached fully through me and that all the Gentiles might hear. Of course, this is a letter written by St. Paul to Timothy. It is given in the words of St. Paul. And all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. So when we are commissioned to work for the Lord, the Lord assures us that he's delivering us from the mouth of the lion. And the Lord will stand with us. He will strengthen us so that the message might be preached fully through you and me. And all the Gentiles listening now in this meeting, listening in the future, whenever the uh, YouTube is going to be viewed or watched or read or heard, they will be listening to the same word and God will again minister through that same word. He will deliver us out of the mouth of the lion. Are we stuck? Are we in difficult point of time when we don't know which side to go, when we have no answers? The Lord can deliver us out of the mouth of the lion. And verse 18 says, 
and the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 Praise be Jesus Christ. Praise be Jesus. Thank you, sister.